Okay, so one thing I left off in the previous video is I forgot to bevel uh, our model, uh, the base for our model, and I'll do this now. Now I could come into geometry and go into crease, my crease menu, and do crease all, but that would crease everything, including these edges right here, that I don't really want to crease uh, these edges, everything, I don't want to crease everything, I just want to crease part of it. So what I can do is use the crease uh, option here uh, that is dependent on the crease tolerance. So if I crease that, let's see what, what has creased. So it creased those bits, I need those bits creased, yes, and that creased, and this creased, yeah. Uh, I don't need that creased. So it kind of gave me the, the result I was looking for, and I can just use my bevel slider here and crease everything right there and I should have a good result going into Substance Painter. I'll just do a quick save and I'll do uh, unwrap. Okay, that's unwrapped. We can look at the flattened one if we like. Uh, it's a bit crazy there, but uh, that will work. So I can check it out in Substance Painter if I like, just to make sure that everything is okay. So I'll do that, I'll come here and again control F4, discard that and paste. And let's look at our model here. And that's fine. Okay, that is sorted. These will be the plastic bits. And I'll show you how to do that with uh, poly paint information. And later on when we start using, uh, when you start texturing. Right, okay, let's go back into ZBrush. And let's do this part of, of the pole, this long bit here. Okay, we're going to do this long bit now. Which is going to go inside of that shape there. And then we're going to create another shape for the top of it. Okay, now you can re you remember that we talked about this and how many faces we would go for if we wanted something like that. And, and for this, and I'm going to use... Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm going to insert a cube so that I have a shape there. I'm just going to select this last one. I'll insert a cube. Okay, there's our cube. And I'm, I'm just going to go into solo mode here and going to initialize. And here in initialize, I am going to make this cube something else. So I'll make this cube change the resolution here. Uh, so we were talking, this is a bit different, I'm not gonna... Okay, this works in a bit of a different way than the other system. Right, so if I do 2-2... Two, two. Alright, so this X-Res is actually 1. Uh, and these guys... Okay, so I wanted to point up. And if I want to point up, the X resolution is going to be 2, the Y... The Z, I think it's like that. New, pointing up. Can I get this right? Yes, I can. Okay, so now we have eight faces all around. As you can see, there's eight faces. Let me make this bigger. One, two, three, four on each side. And it's all quadrangles. Even though I'm going to delete these guys here. And because I've initialized this inside of uh, a tool that already has a 3D uh, poly mesh geometry. I don't need to press make poly mesh 3D. You can see that it's not white. It's not like the, uh, the other ones. So first things first, I am going to use, this is going to be inside of two different mod um, pieces. So I'm going to go into delete and Nope, not poly loop. Delete poly group. All I'm gonna get rid of the top and the bottom, right? I won't need them. And, and now if I come out of solo mode, and I just zoom out a little bit, go into move. You can press spacebar and select move. That's another way of doing it. And this is gonna go in here inside uh, this shape there, and it's gonna be bigger. It's going to be someone something like that. Yes. 
and if you want to really see the whole shape you can select double in the display properties so if I go into display properties and I press double I can see the inside faces as well uh, and that's handy sometimes so I'll make it a bit bigger because when the smoothing comes on okay yeah we're gonna go with that and if I press alt I can change my gizmo to go to the bottom here and place it around there and now if I zoom out I can bring this up make it bigger and can I I mean can I use my reference for the size I kinda can it's it's on an angle there but it should be alright it should be alright I can make this an angle as well and well you can use, use the see-through and if I use the see-through and make this a bit bigger let's just make pure ref a bit bigger here and right there please okay and if I use see-through here and I have to change the options here so mode always on top no so that now when I click ZBrush I can see what's up there okay so I'll make this a bit smaller try to fit the angle more or less and well I don't want I don't need it to be too precise but just precise enough and it's maybe smaller so I'll just zoom out a little bit yeah that's more or less a bit smaller there doesn't need to be accurate I'm not really worried about accuracy here because this is a game asset right we will do some measuring and usually I do I use measuring in uh, Maya with a measurement tool of Maya so okay so that looks pretty much good enough so I'll remove see-through uh, actually it's the other way around is it no it's zero okay go back into PureRef right click this and go into mode always on top again right okay so we've done that bit and I'll go back to draw mode oh I moved it up a little bit okay let me just move it down again in there please okay if I press alt and bring this here right back into draw mode right so because we won't see the open edges uh, this should work just fine uh, once we open it up in uh, substance painter and now let's do the top piece and this is the top piece okay let's do that now remember that we used 12 faces on that bottom piece and that bottom piece is going to be practically on the floor so the user is never going to see it very uh, close up this top piece is a bit different you're probably going to use, going to see this top piece a bit closer so for this top bit i'm going to use 16 faces and see how does that look now i forgot to unwrap this so i'm just going to quickly press unwrap here make sure that's unwrapped and we can move forward so pretty easy to create this one we're going to come up here go back to our cylinder that we were creating before so this guy if i press f i can see it oh this is poly mesh uh, geometry i'm not interested in that one i'm interested in this one and this is the one that f12 i think so if i go into initialize here and change this to 16 now 16 should work for this example 
And remember, this is this is going to be closed geometry, so there's no inner radius. I'm just going to use it like that, and I think it's a bit bigger, so I'm just going to go and do something like this. Okay, that's sorted, and I'll make Polymesh 3D. Go back into my original subtool, and now I'll just have to insert that new one. Okay, and was it? I don't know which one it is. Oh, yes, it's this one. Okay. Okay, this is my 16 face one. All right. So let's move this up. Uh, so I'll go into move here and move it all the way up there. Zoom in on this. Let's actually make it a bit smaller. And it's going to go in there just like that. Yep, and let me just look at the reference again. It's a bit thicker. Okay, something like that, and that should work. Just make sure it's right up there. Now, I don't know, it's really hard to see on this pixelated image, but we have a little bit coming out there, and we can do that. We can get picky with that, or we could just ignore it, but I am actually going to do that. So if I go to my Z modeler and I click here to create an edge, uh huh, it's gonna be something like that. Really quickly, if I go into a press control shift and go into my uh, brush palette again, let me just take this out of my face, please. Okay, so if I go into brush control shift and I click this and I go to a select lasso, I can now control shift and select these guys control w to change their polyframe information and if i control shift click now that's only one polygroup and now i can use polygroup all inset region and that will give me a new polygroup right there and now if i go into my normal z modeler which i use for q mesh polygroup all I can bring this up like so. Oh, the bottom bit has uh, polygroups as well. So let me just grab that bit there. And now we just have those faces there. And I'll use a different polygroup for that. Control Shift click. And now I can do what I want it to. Something like that, like we have in the reference. All right. Now we can just bevel this and uh, for this purpose I'm just going to use bevel and do that. Same down here. Okay, a bevel there. Smaller one this time. Now I just have to click these guys and I get the bevels I need. Okay, so that should work perfectly fine in, um, in Substance Painter. Uh, now I was thinking if we're going to use animation, if for example you want to pop this bit out, you might just want to make these go inwards a little bit more. So if I just come here and, and I'll select, uh, yeah, you can go to move, for example, or I can just use, uh, Q mesh and press shift and I'll bring that down and that should be enough should be enough if I use solo another way you can use solo is control shift alt Z which is a big one and see if it's not protruding out it's not it's fine right there already have a bevel there I don't really need I don't think I need this edge going edge loop going around there so I'm just gonna get rid of that edge loop uh, just the edge loop please in fact in fact if I unsolo this and I can I can go into my slides and make these go in like that and now if I come out of solo if I I can delete all these guys um, and I can use delete and do a poly loop 
which I could used before when I was trying to insert that stuff, which be a bit smarter, but I didn't. But anyway, and that should be fine. And I can actually do the same thing to these guys in here. So poly loop, you can see the direction. That's the direction I want. And that's cool. That's gone. I don't need that. All sorted and ready to go. Right, that's that bit done. And let me just come out of solo. Perfecto. That bit is done. So I can now unwrap it. I'll just do a quick save first and unwrap that bit. So it's got UVs. And now we're gonna do the screw handle. And I just got a little bit of a reference of a simple screw handle right here. Now I'm not gonna be worried about the detail here because we're not gonna even see that in the game. So I'm just gonna create this the screw as a, a, a soft surface. And uh, I'll do, maybe I do this indentation here. Uh, we, and that's about it. I'm not going to do this uh, indentation, indentation. <laughs> this uh, little bump here. Okay, I'm just going to do it flat and uh, let's get on with it. So I'm going to go back to our cylindrical shape here and uh, well, not this one, the one that is still white. Where is it? Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, okay. Go back to this cylindrical shape here. And I'll use this one to do what we want to. Okay, uh, so probably four faces here. Da, da, da. I think we can make this one a bit smaller. We can go down to 12. It's not going to be up close. So something like this should be enough for the handle, not the screw. We'll do the screw separately. So let's just make polymesh 3d here go back and i'll just rename this otherwise i don't know which one is handle p for prototype right click this insert that handle p where is it there it is and whoa take it easy brush okay Okay, I'm just gonna solo everything and focus on this alone, right? Okay, so let's go to back to our poly groups and uh, do that max angle trick that we just did. Okay, and that works. That's what I wanted to, and I want different poly groups because I, I am going to extrude this out. And let me just think a little bit about how I'm gonna do this. I'm going to actually move these polygons. So you can press Alt and click. Right. And now if I go and use Z Modeler Q Mesh and single poly, it's going to grab all these guys. So if I just grab these guys and I press Shift and let's see. Mm, yeah, that's not going to be enough geometry. That is not going to be enough geometry. Okay, no problem. Uh, let's just uh, get rid of it. I'll just delete it. Go back to our handle P. And we're going to actually use 16. So go back to initialize. No, this is not the one I'm looking for. This is the one. Okay. So let's try with 16 here. And... I'm going to delete this and this stuff. I'm just going to do a cleanup. I'll pause the video. Put a cleanup, otherwise I, I get lost. Right, so yeah, make polymesh 3D. And now I would go back to this and I insert that polymesh, which is the cylinder. Okay, and now if I just alt click just these guys, maybe. Okay, that's more like it. That's more like it. And of course I can use scale. And I'll just do polygroup all. That's a new polygroup, so 
Okay, maybe something like that. And I'm going to take this opportunity to show you something that I really like to do. And if I, I'm just going to go into my, my mask brushes and select mask lasso for this. And now if I mask this bit, this bit, this bit, and this bit, and I invert my mask, now when I go to move, I can simply scale this down a little bit and get it to that point. Oh, I scaled on all... No, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, let's just undo that. Undo that scale. And the type of scale that I actually wanted was that and that okay not the three axis so you can use this system uh, to just move around vertices and and it's really useful right so the whole model i think i'm gonna make it like that and that should work and obviously we're gonna need some beveling so I'll just do that, you know, I have to do is click that side. And this should work, but I have my doubts. Um, so if I have my doubts, I'm just going to do a quick save here. I'll unwrap this and I'll check it out how it's looking inside of Substance Major. So Control F4, discard that, paste, and we're not going to look at this any closer than that. So, yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, that's a good handle. It's not very like the reference, but it will do, I guess. Yeah, that will do. Now I'm just going to place it where it's supposed to be. I just pause the video while I place this, otherwise it can be boring. Actually, if you're new to ZBrush, I think you should know about this. So, if I bring it down, get a bit smaller there. It's when you start rotating something, if you press Shift, it will snap to 22.5 degree rotation units. So, we know we want it around there. Maybe a bit further. Yep, and now all you need, we need is the screw. And for the screw, I'm going to use the same system as I used for this pole here. And, and that's going to be insert cube. And I'll press F to focus on that cube. Come down to initialize. And I think it was, it would be something like this. Let me just go into solo and draw two two a no yes that's it and i'm happy with that so let's place it uh huh hang on a second uh, this is going to be a screw so I, I don't need these faces let's just delete these faces and I got it to poly loop. If I just go into poly group poly, that should delete both faces. And this is going to be our screw, our fake screw. Okay, so coming out of solo, going into move, bring it all the way up there, up there, and that's going to be a little screw. That's a big screw. So I'll just scale like that and like that. And we sort it. Is our screw in the center? No. We'll use. Now it is. Yep. Pretty much in the center right there. Okay. 
I'll uh, unwrap it and our screw is ready right I'm just gonna place the IV holder which is currently hidden and in the next video we're gonna be doing the wheels which is probably the most complex shape that we're gonna be working with so there's our pole I just wanna rotate this using shift okay and make it bigger make sure it goes in there like that yeah pretty much okie dokie let's get to the next video where we're going to be doing the wheels